What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mycology game. I am your host, Myco Geeky, and as you can tell, I have a big shit-eating grin on my face tonight because I am very excited. We have a true Myco celebrity tonight, undeniable uh, renowned uh, a guest. Uh, and, and I'm going to give you just a quick little story. On, on how this all came to be. Um, one day I'm, I'm on Instagram and I see a story post from, uh, from our guest and it just looked like he was uh, in a good place, mentally, emotionally connected with nature. And I reached out and I just say, hey, man, I can just tell it seems like you're in a good place. I'm really glad to see that, you know, it touched me. Uh, thanks for that post. And one thing led, led to the other, we chit chatted a bunch and uh, here we are, so. Tonight, we are going to talk to somebody who you all have surely watched many of his videos. You guys, uh, you know, your, your early mycology careers have surely been influenced and shaped by this guy. Um, and tonight, we're going to get to know him. We're going to follow his journey, uh, both on YouTube and as an at-home mycologist. And hopefully by the end of tonight, you guys are all going to feel like uh, you know this guy a little bit better. And I am talking about the one, the only Philly Golden Teacher. Let's welcome him onto the show. What's up, man? Thank you so much, Michael Kiki. Ah, no problem, dude. I, uh, I, I just got to say, I have been geeking out all day. Uh, I, I had a stressful day, but you definitely were just in the back of my mind like, yes, tonight is going to be good. It's going to be fun. So uh, I, I'm very excited. Yes, likewise. I'm totally excited for this. Great. Um, so now when we got to talking about doing this, um, I really said, you know, the thing that I'm noticing uh, on the podcast that seems to be Maybe I didn't have it as an agenda. The agenda in the beginning was definitely teach us all your secrets, right? But um, what I'm finding, a lot of people are really appreciating getting to know people. Uh, people that maybe they're DMing with or they are, um, you know, making a little message on, on your Instagram or wherever they're trying to interact with you. But, but this format really seems to help people be like, oh, that's, I like this guy. So um, that's really my goal tonight is, is to have everybody understand you a little bit better, know a little bit more about you and uh, understand your journey that you've gone on, gone on as just hands down the, uh, the mushroom uh, content creator on YouTube that is at least in the actives community, uh, you know, you set the bar for sure. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, here, here's what I want to do. Let's start off. Um, I like to ask everybody how, like, what was that seminal moment, uh, whether it was as a very young child or a teenager or uh, with, uh, you know, other guests. It, it was much later in life, but what was that first moment in your life where you were like, oh, mushrooms are kind of cool. I think I'm going to pay attention to them a little bit. Um, wasn't too long ago, actually. Um, okay. I would say it started around 2017. All right, 2017, five years ago. Yes. Cool. Yep. And what, um, what, like, what? Talk to me about what it was. Did you, you know, were you hiking in the woods and you saw, uh, you know, a giant flush of chicken in the woods? Did you, like, talk to us about? what was the what was going on that, that triggered that that connection the connections with me to the mushrooms yes okay um yeah uh, around 2017 uh i was just personally looking out uh looking into the mushrooms um because i was kind of in a position in life where i was kind of dealing with a lot of mental health issues and just kind of looking into different um, remedies um, to kind of you know take care of this. Um, so it's kind of where I kind of stumbled into uh, okay. mushrooms. That kind of got me like really kind of like interested in this. Cool. Uh, that's what for actives. That's the the same story for me. I read an article. I was like, wow, people are using this for what? Kept reading, kept reading. Yeah. So that's very cool. Could you um, so so 
so you went from the interest to how did you go into saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to grow mushrooms to try to medicate myself, see what this might be able to do for me? Um, yeah, I mean, I, overall, I, I just love mushrooms in general. Um, growing up, I, I love the taste of mushrooms. My mom cooks mushrooms all the time, so um, I, I love them. Um, but um, what kind of got me uh, into it is just because, you know, I was just trying to, to seek out the... Um, uh, the mental health uh, aspect of you know that yeah um so i mean it, i i looked into it i mean I, it's it, it's there's a lot of information out there that will you know give you uh the knowledge to be able to kind of get get going yeah. and um yeah it wasn't that that hard if you did, did a little bit of research to um get into it so now you have, and, and later on, we're going to go through uh, sort of a visual history here, but, but let's just start um, on the more personal, emotional level. I would love to hear the first time that you ever uh, used it as medicine, how, how you felt it, uh, you know, uh, affected you, didn't affect you. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion you liked it and, and it did something positive for, for you. Uh, yes, yes. Um... Well, uh, it, I mean, I've, I've tried um, mushrooms when I was um, a lot younger, uh, back in the college phase, um, and uh, it's, uh, I didn't have a good experience at that time, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit, and I kind of stayed away from okay. mushrooms for a while. Um, and it just wasn't only until recently that I started kind of looking into it because of, you know, um, the, the potential benefits um, that it might have. Now, so I don't know about you. My first experiences when I was younger was very much we happened to get a pathetic looking bag of mushrooms. And by the time we divided amongst, you know, the three to five people we were hanging out with that night, I don't think that as a, a younger person, I ever really had a legitimate dose. I think I had probably what was closer to a museum dose. It was enough to, you know, augment what was going on that evening, make things funny, maybe just very subtle uh, visuals or whatnot. But it really wasn't until uh, I did the same thing that you did, which was going, okay, this, this might be something that helped me uh, out with my ADHD and other stuff I was dealing with. And it just, there, for me, there was no comparison. Um, I just felt that as a youth, I, I never, I didn't have the sentence setting right. I, I wasn't using it for the, uh, you know, therapeutic benefits and all that. So you said that when you were young, you had a bad experience. Do you mind talking about that experience? Like, uh, was it too no. much? Was it just not good? Were you <clears throat> not in a good place? Um... I guess it was just kind of, it came on as a whim, you know, it, okay. I just wasn't kind of, I was kind of peer pressured into it. Um, it was just my college roommates and uh, it was during the middle of summer. We were on summer break during college. So at the apartment, um, hanging out and uh, one of my roommates had, uh, you know, gotten some from his buddy up in New York. And um, so we decided to take them. We put them on um, burgers mm -hmm. and uh, just, ate them down and uh yeah just kind of uh kind of experience it probably wasn't that big of a dose it was just our first time trying it we're, we're all new to it at that time as well right. um the other guys had a good time um however um they had you know great time they went downstairs down to the pool uh, i went down with them and um they started kind of acting all loopy down by the pool and then uh people started staring and then i got paranoid oh. um so when I got paranoid, people, uh, you know, I'm thinking like, do people know, you know, that we're tripping? And it, right. it just sent me down a bad spiral. Um, and, and then from there, um, I went back upstairs as I was going back upstairs in the elevator. Uh, I remember for some reason having thoughts of like um, uh, thinking about what, why am I doing this? And kind of like, um, mm -hmm. it, it was just kind of... Uh, I find like a, a, a kind of like wasting time at that moment or something like that. Okay. Um, but, but I, I just wasn't in a good headspace at all. Um, and, and as I kept thinking and thinking and ruminating, as I was just walking back up the, the elevator, I left my roommates to go back up to the place. Uh, I was just like in my head the whole entire time. And 
Um, being on there, your perception of time is kind of different when you're kind of like spiraling down. Um, I, I had like thoughts of suicide and stuff. And like, I've never had that before in my entire life. Um, and it freaked me out. Um, yeah. And um, I didn't know how to handle it. So when I went back upstairs, I kind of like went to the bathroom. I'm freaking out. I'm kind of like crying in there. I'm like, anyways, uh, my roommates came back up later on and uh, they kind of calmed me down and uh, everything was, you know, all right. I kind of just didn't, you know, I had a good time and then I had a bad time and it's kind of like right. that. That was it. I kind of, kind of don't want to really mess with it anymore. Um, but yeah, that was just the first time. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, later on in life, when I kind of looked into it for, um, you know, what I intended to, um, it, it's been extremely beneficial and uh, it's helped me out so much. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was so grateful for what it's done to my life that I wanted to uh, give back. Uh, so that's why I, I decided to create my content and, you know, teach everybody uh, about it because I, I think it's amazing. Yeah. Now, so the i i preface the the show here with with the, the day you had your story post and i it just it just screamed somebody just had a really phenomenal trip and f you know reconnected with everything important in life and it, it just was so obvious and i i just thought it was so wonderful to see so uh yeah i i i think it's really great that you're coming from that place to um go well yeah this is great other people should give this a go. This might, you know, if you're struggling, if things aren't working out, if uh, you never know that, that that trip might help figure some stuff out for you. It's, uh, I, I, I'm really deeply uh, feel the same way that it's important. And that's part of what this podcast is all about as well. It's just getting more people on here to share their enthusiasm for all this. So I appreciate that. Okay, next question. Um, we talked a little bit, uh, ourselves about some, uh, family history that, um, that you probably came to the table, uh, with this, uh, with, with trips and, and things like that, probably a little bit more skeptical or apprehensive and hearing you tell the story about your, your, your poolside trip and how, you immediately got introspective and you know dark and all that. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit about some of your family history and how that might have shaped that early experience? Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> so growing up, um, kind of interesting. Uh, I, I was the youngest of um, eight. Eight. And, uh, you said eight. Eight kids, yes. right? People, yes, humans. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. I, I, yes. It's uh, a big family. Yeah, no, I, I, I came into this world kind of like as, as an accident. Mm -hmm. so, and you said you were the last child. Yeah, yeah. yeah my okay. older brother, um, my older brother is, uh, he's, he's have history with um, schizophrenia, bipolar depression. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, it kind, of, it kind of didn't. Uh, work out well for him but uh he's 10 years older than me and and me being the youngest um um crazy as my mom had me when she was 46. Uh, wow <laughs> that's impressive um, i mean you say accident i say i don't know that seems like everything was meant to be there you were you were definitely they they might not have planned you but but seemed like the universe definitely did Okay. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of make the long story short a little bit. Um, I kind of, you know, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why, why the name kind of goes around that. Um, but I kind of lived down there, um, kind of in the in the hoods, kind of. Um, and we're kind of like immigrants, right. come kind of come over here, trying to like figure things out and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of like we, we kind of like just lived at poverty. We were receiving welfare, you know, just kind of um, trying to get by is what we can in Philly. I mean, a lot of people that live in Philly don't really like, you know, uh, don't have a lot of money. So that's that's how we were anyway at that time back back in the old days. Um, do what you got to do to survive. Yeah, 
Um, I, I hear you. I, I didn't grow in a, grow up in a city. I, 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 was I had a lot of traumatic town. issues that kind of happened to me as I was kind of growing up in Philly. So it kind of kind of okay. shaped me to to have a little bit of like a darker uh, right. view or aspect to, to the world because of what I've experienced in, in terms of like trauma coming up as a, a child. In addition to also, I mean, even if your brother wasn't schizophrenic, even if you didn't live in a bad part of Philadelphia, you still are one of eight children, which is a struggle and challenge in and of itself. So I, I can only imagine. I had one sister, so I cannot imagine. That's a lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah. So you grew up... Uh, witnessing and understanding the serious challenge that it is to have a family member with schizophrenia and in his case also bipolar disorder um what was that like like what um you know how 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 difficult was that i know that can what that looks like can can really vary yeah so he was kind of like hanging out with the wrong crowd um during school and uh, he, he kind of brought a little bit of trouble onto the family. Yeah. He got himself into drug addiction, and um, I think you know perhaps that might have you know induced his schizophrenia. Uh, but he, he would have episodes sometimes um, when we're at home growing up, um, and uh, it would kind of freak me out because uh, they, they happened randomly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one one time he he tried to walk from Philly all the way down to North Carolina, like the, the police picked him up on the, wow. the highway. And, uh, and my mom got a call, and yeah, we had to go go get him. Um, and uh, another time, he, he tried to uh, commit suicide. Um, so it's it's just kind of like scary when he. Has and you're young, problems. right? When this is happening, you're still pretty young. Yes, 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 correct. And uh, yeah, one of one of his episodes, he he tried to, he tried to kill me. Uh, so that was very traumatic. Um, wow. Now, so was he, uh, was he paranoid? Like, did he have delusional thought processes that, yes. that triggered that? Yes, he thought that? people yeah. were living in, a, he thought, like, there were spirits living in our basements, and there right. was, like, this guy guarding a child or something like that. Like, he would be hearing voices, and right. he, um, he, he tells us about this, but, like, we don't hear it, and of course, he, yeah. he just kind of thinks we're crazy, and, yeah, it's just, it was kind of uh, a challenging um, living at home with him. Right. So you had this background. Now, see, you when you were talking about this the other day, I was thinking, so he's, and, and I deal with, uh, I've taken care of these types of patients uh, in, in my day job. And so I know what it looks like, and it is, it can especially be very scary. And I'm thinking, so here's young PGT on his first trip, and his perceptions are beginning to be altered. And I can't imagine that 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 history, that family history with your brother did not inform that that first experience to some degree. I mean, it I, does. I would have been in my head, dude, just like, yeah, well, the oh. thing is, um, you know, I, I my parents kind of have high expectations for me to do well. Mm -hmm. So by me, you know, taking drugs in the middle of summer like i right. felt in a way like i was not being a good child like why am i right spending my time doing this when i should be trying to like maybe get a summer job or like doing something a little bit more productive right um so that's kind of where that that tone kind of got into there gotcha so so you have that that early trip sort of paints a, a bad picture then later in life you're struggling with some stuff and like me you read an article or somehow you get exposed to the idea that that this medicine might do you some good and you just went for it now this is five years ago so i mean if i'm not mistaken there would have been almost no content on youtube you probably were on the shroomery walk me through sort of how you first got into things um for so growing, I... for cultivating Okay. Um, when I get into things, I research them a lot, mm -hmm. and I went on the shroomery. I went on Reddit. I went on YouTube, um, and I just looked up mushrooms um, and how to grow them. And um, yeah, I kind of started things off doing the uh, PF Tech, um, mm -hmm. and uh, from there it kind of transitioned. Um, what kind of got me back into it was kind of the Uncle Ben's Tech. Sure. And uh, from there, I uh, went on to the Brook Boy Tech, and then, um, yeah, I just went on to full-on, you know, 
now here we're at <laughs> doing mycology. Yep. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, so you, I think yesterday we were talking and you mentioned that at some point you, after you started this new journey uh, of, of using mushrooms as medicine, uh, you had lots of positive experiences initially, but then at one point you had another bad trip. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I, I, I've had something happen recently to one of my uh, Discord members that was a uh, very sobering, uh, you know, uh, bad situation. And I, I think it's very important that while we constantly talk about how amazing the medicine is, it, it's also important to talk about, you know, how we should respect it as well. Um, sure. I don't mind going into that. Um I've I've had a, a number of experiences um, with with mushrooms, um, ranging from doses. Um, I've had a few heroic doses as well, um, and uh, yeah, I've I've had experience everything that you can kind of experience from mushrooms. I've experienced euphoria, I've experienced happiness, I've experienced sadness, I've experienced paranoia. Um, you know, fear of death. Um, these things have kind of come up. It's just, yep. it, it kind of, what I feel, it kind of amplifies your emotions. So whatever kind of headspace you're kind of in, it it kind of amplifies it. And whatever right. you're feeling at the time, you know, like if you're feeling good, then you're going to probably be laughing, um, giggling for a while. If, if you're not, then, you know, sometimes you might be crying. Um, I, I went through it. And um, yeah, when, when it does get kind of crazy and uh, chaotic, um, it, it does kind of humble you. And yeah. uh, you have to really respect it because uh, when you kind of go off onto a journey, uh, if you kind of don't respect it, you, you kind of abuse it, you think too much. And it's just like yeah. sometimes you just never come back from it. Very true, unfortunately. Yeah, I have a, uh, the other day we were talking in the Discord and somebody was talking about how if they're going to do a heroic dose, they are especially careful in their preparations. They will have little, they'll put little post-it note signs up of, you know, reminding them you're on a heroic dose, you, you, you know, you, you can do X, Y, and Z. And I had uh, never even thought to do that and was like god oh, this is really smart this is someone who has done this way more than i have i'm only a year in so uh, i'm still learning every day and I, I just thought yes that is that's a good thing to do if you don't have a trip sitter um you know messages to yourself when <laughs> when you're on your journey is probably a good idea um all right where are we at here all right so five years ago the, the inevitable uh, accumulation of where we're at today started. Um, do you want to pull up your... Um, so, so guys, uh, so for the viewers... I mean, there's more to the, to the uh, uh, trip reports, if you're interested in hearing them. But oh, for sure, yes. I mean, I, that is so fascinating to me. I've, I've been thinking, do I just have a like a half-hour trip report show? Like, that, that might be fun, too. So, oh, man, is it any and all particularly meaningful trips I would love to hear about. Yes. Hit it. Go. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, How about this? Most surprising, you know, most like surprising. Uh, most revelatory, <clears throat> surprising, would have never expected that type of trip or that experience to come from a trip. Yeah. Like most, okay. the... most novel. Okay. Um, there's two experiences that kind of come to my mind um uh, maybe okay. three um uh the first one was when i kind of first grew out apes um i took 5.5 grams of them um, okay <laughs> yeah now, say that that's a, that's plenty now i i had known coming into it it was a heroic dose I, I had kind of prepared for it um okay i, I pretty much just laid in my bed um <laughs> with my earphones on with like my head my music trying to like set it and uh sure. wow it, it was quite the uh experience just laying in my bed you know just like wa watching it unfold uh, mm -hmm. in front of my eyes um there was just nothing nothing else like it the the apes do hit different that that is for sure 
Now, now for, for you, was that more hallucinatory? Was that more uh, just like v visuals? Um, oh, what was, was that journey? Extreme, extremely visual, extremely mm -hmm. visual. Um, it, 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 it is basically, I had an eagle death on there. It was my first kind of like experience with the eagle death. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was just mind blowing. That, that's kind of the only thing I, I can like sum it up in one word um that's what happens here and um, mm -hmm. um and then more so i also want to hear about after you have these and you come back what fascinates me the most is how it affects you then when you return to the ego and you return to your body and you return to your life and some of the mundanity of, of daily living and the ways that that journey then informs and shapes how you react to things and, and how, how those reactions might be different than how they were before. Do you feel that that happens to you? That, that you know, the, the journeys you go on make you a different person when you come back? I totally agree. I totally mm -hmm. agree about that. Um, oh gosh, uh, so much is coming to my mind right now that I'm trying to like, decide kind of what the kind of uh, focus in on, uh, but yeah, something like that has happened recently. I feel like every time I come back from those journeys, I feel a lot more wiser. Um, my recent, um, journey that I had that was kind of, you know, very eye opening to me, um, was you know, about one gram of pan science, um, and ego death on that as well. Um, but, one gram. I, yes. And, nice. uh, those pans. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I went into it um, knowing that, you know, that was going to happen somewhat. Uh, it's been like a year since since then. Um, I, I've kind of been scared um, to kind of go into the, the realm of the hyperspace. Um, kind, of, kind of crazy things happen in there, you know. Like, it's kind of like uh, I've seen, uh, I hold my hands up and I've seen like 20 fingers on my hands. Um, I've seen my cat with like uh, three eyes. Um, I've, you know, seen stuff at the 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 walls coming to me i've seen my headset kind of like crumble into sand it, it was kind of it, interesting um seeing all this happen uh, but yeah, when you come back um it, it kind of it makes you appreciate the the reality that you have currently the the right. you know I, I kind of feel like it's nothing like you know they kind of take you apart to a different perspective and then when you come back to what you have now you kind of gain some more knowledge about that perspective and it kind of makes you feel a bit wiser um when you come back from yes. it, in my in my experience or opinion yeah so i also i i used to do some creative writing in college and so I, i'm into metaphors and and, and uh, can occasionally be a, a little poetic in nature and the one thing the way i try to describe it to people who have not experienced it is it is significantly adjusting the way your brain is processing the, the input that it's receiving. And so even if in like the most boring on Terrence McKenna ask way of understanding what's happening, when you come back, it at least gives you the understanding that, you know, I am this being within this body and the way my eyes and my ears work, you know, have sort of a baseline and going in an altered consciousness, helps you realize and, and kind of, for me, significantly humbles you to understand that, you know, you are, you are dwelling within this body and you are existing within this amazing universe. And, and for some reason, it just always deepens my appreciation for basically everything. Yes. Most, of the, most of the time, yes. Yes, it does. It does yes. uh, make you appreciate everything you have that's in life and what yeah. makes uh you know life so complex and wonderful it's like yeah it's, it's we, we sh should be having this this is so great and that that's kind of it gives you a little bit of perspective of yeah. you know that agreed all right man do you want uh so we so so i was gonna i was saying to the viewers so um if you guys are like me you are a huge fan of the artwork 
and uh, I, I think the artwork is extremely charming. It is super fucking cool. And uh, so when I was talking to PGT, I said, we, we, we need to bring some of the artwork on and talk about that. And unbeknownst to me, he also uh, put together an amazing slideshow kind of about his journey as a cultivator. So I think we're going to start out with the art. Um, everybody likes colors. We just got done talking about great trips. So uh, what do you say we, we walk everybody through the, the artistic journey that has happened from deciding to create this content? Um, sure. Um, yeah, I, I can get into this. Cool, man. All right. Let me, let me pull it up here. All right. And now I think you, you, you can run the show at this point. Okay. Yes, I can. Great. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the evolution of PGC here is kind of where I started here. Um, so it's kind of started back in 2020. Um, I decided to get into content creation so all, all of this has been kind of utilizing the the skills that i've kind of acquired growing up uh -huh. um i did a lot of graphic design i was into building websites for people um i was a real like tech geek nerdy kid kind of like thing sure um so yeah it, it was that and in addition to my wife um she's very good at drawing um gosh I can... So, so she's uh, part of that. She she's part of the all the art that we see. She's influential in that. Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So she pretty much does all the artwork for PGC. Everything that you see that that is PGC is is mostly done by her. Um, so yeah, uh, she kind of helped awesome. me throughout the whole entire process. Um, she kind of. So she would draw it, and then I would kind of fix it up in Photoshop and uh, kind of, you know, work with it there um, and kind of decide to go into uh, video creation. And um, at that time, when I kind of got into everything, when I get into topics I like to research, I, I personally like to go into YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot of stuff from YouTube, and I was looking up stuff for mycology. And I stumbled across a, a couple people. It was um, Home Mycology, Arvin47. Um, I stumbled upon Gary's channel, of course. Um, a couple of other people's channel like that. And uh, it got me interested into it. And I kind of absorbed all this information. And I kind of like um, thought, you know, hey, I, I, you know, I like mushrooms. You know, it's, it's influenced me a lot, you know. So I wanted to kind of teach other people about it because um for me mushrooms one of the things that it, it taught me to do is it taught me to love myself and okay. do, being able to do that i can love other people and uh that's kind of where everything kind of flourishes in that's kind of what got me into wanting to create content for this and um i thought at the time when i was kind of looking up like hey you know maybe i could make some content too so i decided to just make some videos for fun um Utilizing whatever I had at the time, um, can in you know Adobe uh, Premiere and right. Adobe Photoshop. So I made videos, and uh, at first I didn't expect them to to go, um, you know, viral or go big or anything like that. I did it just for fun. I just wanted to, um, you know, just see where I can do. Yeah, and you like doing that stuff. Yeah, you're. It, yeah, the, it was like a fun hobby. It was something fun to do. Yes, it really mm -hmm. was. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it kind of uh, started off. So when we first initiated it, um, this right here is what the original PGC looked like. All right. So, now, I have to ask, is your wife a Pokemon fan? Yes, we're both Pokemon I, fans. I, okay. Well, I'm with you too, man. I don't know if you play the trading card game, but I get all my kids into playing that. I, I, I definitely, I, I see the influence for sure. That's very cool. Yes, yes, yep. Um, so, uh, I don't know. It, it, for me, it comes something kind of like, I played Minecraft as well, so the, the Mushroom kind of like stuck mm -hmm. out to me. So, uh, at that time, I was like, hey, let's just take the Mushroom and let's just kind of like do something with this. Um, so we kind of made videos doing this because, you know, I thought of trying to be creative. Yeah. So this is where it started off as. And then when it started getting popular, um, uh, here's more pictures of the artworks. So as you wow, can see, she, cool. spent a, she spent a lot of time on, on these, um, creating these. She, she draws them on a, a tablet. And uh, 
yeah, I, I tell her, you know, what I'm interested in, what video topics I'm going to make, and she comes up with these uh, amazing, you know, illustrations for that. Uh, yeah, here's man, another one here. Cool, so, yeah, this, this is like uh, when we first started off, um, where it went. So, uh, after it started kind of getting a little bit big, we're kind of thinking, like, hey, you know, maybe it might not be good to do the, the Minecraft thing, maybe because of like copyright issues or yeah. something like that. I'm always. Right. <laughs> Worry about that. All right, so I want to hear. So, what is there a backstory to the deer? Yes. I so, want to hear it. Okay. So, um, I put up a poll on the YouTube community asking people, um, "Hey, we're going to change to a new mascot. What would you guys be um, interested in seeing?" Um, so, a bunch of results came back. Um, deer uh, with mushrooms was one of the top ones. Um, the other top one was a turtle, um, okay. and um, at that time I presented it to my wife, like, hey, this is what the, the community thinks, um, so what do you think about drawing these instead? Um, so she tells me, like, I, so she gave it a try, and um, she prefers having the deer instead, uh, because the turtle um, is, you know, they're, they're kind of like round-headed, they're like bald, right. and uh, she, she really dislikes like bald things. Okay. Um, so she refused to draw turtles. So I was like, "All right, wow. here it is." What a here hater it is. for bald bald things, man! Dang. Um, I got well, a quick. I get, I get the turtle thing because they're like patient, you sure. know, and they're like yeah. wise. They like live long. It's got. I, I get it, but like, I yeah, we we didn't do that. So the so deer uh, with the almondita mushrooms at that time, you know, like the yeah, the, people the were talking of, about that story. That that's kind of cool. I like that. Yep. So we kind of just mash it in and. Uh, yeah, so this is what she came up with. So, now, I got a, I got a quick viewer question. Let me find it here. Um, you know, we love this art. Uh, X who spooks wants to know, does his wife have an account anywhere, like for, for non-PGT-related art? Um, yes, actually. Um, she started a, a page on um, Instagram mm -hmm. for it. Cool. Maybe we can, if you get that to me, I can post it in the description so people can, can go check it out. It's, I, uh... it's um, at Art of Mushy. Oh, M-U-S-H-Y. A-R-T-O-F-M-U-S-H-Y. She hasn't started posting anything yet, but she has plans for content on there regarding mycology in the future here. I mean, if she likes money, I know, you know, everybody wants to design a new sticker or get a logo and stuff like that. And I imagine she she could probably do some drawings for people. Yeah, no, she's had people ask her to um, um, draw for them, but she, she hasn't had the time um, uh -huh. to be able to do that. Um, she, she works uh, as a full-time engineer. And uh, it was just quite busy for her, but she's just out of her free time. You know, she would kind of help out with the art. Right. And me, I worked full time too at the time. So I was just doing this during my downtime. Gotcha. Um, as well. Very cool. All right. Sorry. Keep going. I didn't, I just want to quick get that question answered. Okay. So it yeah, it, it, it went, it, it changed over to um, the deer. So uh, at that point, we kind of went in and like she went in and like recreated all the thumbnails from the Minecraft thing over okay. into the deer. It's like she's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I see it. That's very cool in the top. So yeah, this is this is kind of where it started here on the bottom left, and you progress. And she's like, I told her like, hey, we're gonna want like a, a a cool logo that you know really represents this. And then she yeah. came up with this little sketch here with the PGD thing, and then we decided to just kind of shape it up, color it up, and that's the the logo she kind of came up with. Nice. It's cool. I, I, I think that was a good call. I think that, you know, worrying about Minecraft, uh, you know, lawyer letters probably ultimately led to a, a very slick logo. So that was. Yeah. That's cool. Another cool thing is like, you know, PGT, he's got a mushroom on his head. Uh, you know, he's got, he's, he's got mushroom on his mind. I, ah, okay. I like that. Yep. Very cool. So that's kind of where it went. Here's a little bit more of some art that she's done for um, the deer thing here. Uh, most of the art you've seen on the thumbnails already. So um, I'm, I'm trying to go through and um, kind of show you guys the, the art that, you know, that isn't kind of quite out there. 
Um, so uh, we have started a Patreon to kind of help to support us in what we do. And um, on the Patreon, one of the perks that we did was we wanted to um, give back. So we kind of did this thing where we were sending out um, personal thank you cards where we were like handwritten thank yous um, to our best fans on there. And we sent out a postcard oh, cool. that was like a custom design postcard with the art each month. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they would get that and they would get some stickers along with it as well. Fun. Um, it's just a way to just kind of show appreciation that you're supporting yeah. us and uh, we do appreciate you. Yeah, I think that, so I just want to take a moment to say, um, for, for all the vendors watching and, and all the, the young mycologists that maybe someday might decide they've learned enough and, and want to also be a vendor. Um, in my experience, I'm sure many people will agree. Um, any way you can make it more fun um, and bring a little bit more of yourself to the table, you know, whether it's through art or it's through like some cool merchandise or it's through some funny slaps, um, I think that goes a long way. And then I, I remember my very first uh, experience from a vendor who sent me a handwritten note was from uh, a vendor named Missy Maiko. And uh, man, she just, the attention to detail was just so obvious and her plates look so great. And I, it's just, uh, it's an unforgettable experience to get that, you know, a little bit of TLC um, in, in there. So I, I think that's a really cool thing that you guys did i can't imagine that got i mean that had to just at a certain point get overwhelming though right i mean I, i'm yes, thinking that's did. a lot it of did. people yep yeah it did so um we kind of kept up with it for a period of time each month um here's a bit more of it coming up here so oh, uh, that's awesome we we couldn't uh keep up with sending you know like 30 plus letters every month and right. it, it, we just had to kind of end it there we kind of you know told people ahead of time like hey sorry we're gonna do this uh, instead so i kind of changed things around on the patreon uh, right. for that because we just couldn't have the time to do this anymore in addition to working full-time jobs and trying to juggle doing what we're doing already so uh it was a lot but people were supporting us and um yeah so we we just nice. wanted to to thank them very much for it and you know it, it sparked my passion into mushrooms and mycology so yeah we kind of just went along with it um and yeah here here's you know, more all art right here. we need all right pgt we need we need that shirt i you put that shirt up somewhere i'm buying that shirt immediately the 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 this guy oh yes i like that yes um very cool yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, here's here's more artwork. Oh yeah, so talk to me about this. This so now knowing <clears throat> that you guys like uh, Pokemon cards, um, I, I've I've recently seen some of these cards you guys are doing. Talk to people about about what you're doing and um, why you're doing it. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like an inspiration for us. So you can see here, these are like little rough drafts that I've done of um, what we were trying to do. Uh, we're trying to like make a really cool looking mm -hmm. card um, to, to kind of like provide because we didn't really see anyone was really doing it or anyone that did made any cards. They, they were kind of like, eh, you know, right. um, and, and I kind of want to do justice to to, um, you know, cubes and, and other uh, species, all mushroom species, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just been fascinated with them and, and how how each you different varieties that have like unique looks to them yeah and uh yeah I, I wanted to create cards for them that's cool you know uh who else is doing this is uh gary v is is doing a whole series of cards dude i'm ready i think i think these cards need to be like characters and they need they need to have hit points and um that would be super rad. So I hope you keep making these cards because they they show off your your artistic abilities, and it, it's also a way for people to, to collect their favorite varieties. I think that's very cool. Yep, I agree. So I'm I'm you know kind of working through it. We're trying to keep making new cards coming out. So mm -hmm. I, I I just think it's a fun thing. Um, yeah, exactly. For mycology, you know, it, it makes it interesting and cool and like hey you know look at all these cool different you know types of mushrooms that are, are out there they're just you yeah. know amazing awesome um so yeah that, that's oh, that, oh so we're at the end of that one okay with, with the, the artwork yep cool 
Um, well, I 100% hope you keep integrating your art more and more. Um, I had Yoshi on and he talked about what a blessing that he never thought that his interest and in his journey with at-home mycology would actually begin to inform, inspire, and then help him have uh, gratification in his artistic realm that he had a background in. And so I kind of see like this, the similar thing where you are, you're, you know, you're the mushroom guy, you're, you're teaching people how to grow mushrooms, but now you're also getting to celebrate this, this creative skill set that you have. And, uh, it's a way of getting a little bit more of yourself out there and, and give it away to the people that love you and love your content. So I, I think it's a, it's a super cool instinct and, and I hope you keep honoring it because I know, you know, people just love to buy cool stuff and have, I want those cards now. I, I, I get it. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, cool. Yeah. We, we think it's, it's a great to keep trying to make cool stuff for the mycology community. Agreed. Anything that, anything that can make mycology more fun and inviting, yep. you know, I, I'm all for it. Yeah, man. So one of my buddies, he just sent me the other day, this t-shirt and I guess he had like a little group figurine one day and he's just playing, right? He's like harvesting some Enigma and, so he's like, oh, this would be such a fun photo if I like make it look like Groot is like in awe of this enigma. And I just love it when people do that kind of stuff. It just makes the whole process more fun, more interesting, more compelling. So I'm, I am love being able to showcase that stuff. Um, all right. You have this killer slideshow um, that I am personally, now that I know that you made it, I cannot wait to see it. So do you want to do a visual walkthrough of your cultivation journey? I think that's, at, you know, being the grower spotlight for the month. I, I, I think this is really like the bread and butter here of, of what I cannot wait to hear you talk about. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Oh, hold on. I got to get to the beginning. I guess somehow I accidentally got us all the way through to the end. Let's go back here. All right. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, so wh where do you want me to, to lead in with this? So n now, I, if I remember the first slide, um, I think it was your first tub. So we're, are we going back to like 2017? Uh, yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's go back. Time travel. Okay. Um, just give me a quick second here while I uh, grab a sip of water. Sure. All right, guys, a little ASMR for you. PGT also does quality ASMR as, as we're now discovering. Oh, really? <laughs> Did it pick up all that? That was great, man. It was like you're a Foley artist over there. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's dive into this here. Uh, this is my first hub. Very cool. Out, so. Uh, when I first kind of started out, I did the, I did kind of like a hybrid. I did PF Tech, and then I kind of broke up the PF Tech cakes, and then I spawned them out with core into shoeboxes. Okay. And uh, this is kind of what I ended up with. Um, they were golden teachers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that that's where I started off as. So now, where were you living when you grew those? Um, I was living in an apartment at the time you're still yeah. in philadelphia no no this is outside philadelphia oh okay yeah no i grew so up the, in philly so, but so I, these I, are I, I don't live in philly gotcha but i mean that that's your nearest city right yes, yes okay okay so yeah so these are i mean can we go ahead and just say these are maybe the original philly golden teachers is that fair to say possibly okay let's do it there they uh, are. I mean, I personally am, am trying to create my own Philly Golden Teachers. Okay. Um, but yeah, I guess you could you could say this, these okay. are the Golden Teachers that that kind of started me down um, that that path. It's very cool. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to the next one. Yep. These, these are them. Well, uh, again. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, after I did that, um, I kind of took a break a little bit from growing, and then what kind of brought me back into things is kind of when I heard about Uncle Ben's tech coming back out. So, right. um, around this time, they were calling it the Spider-Man tech. Uh, it, it was really interesting to kind of watch this kind of like unfold when someone like figured out, hey, you could actually do this. Um, so that's kind of what got me interested because it, it kind of made things very simple um, for people to kind of get into mycology. And it kind of brought me back into it. And, you know, I've had, you know, hit or misses with Uncle Ben's. Uh, when it works, it's great. When it doesn't, you know, you kind of feel bad with the contamination. It's just like you get like wet rot and like uh, it just smells sour. It's, it's not yeah. great. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what, what kind of got me back into it. Um, and then from there, I got interested into it. I got uh, a pressure cooker. Um, that's kind of like when uh, things kind of like start hitting off. Uh, so here's some more footage. I was doing a broke boy tech at this time. Um, okay. I did not have the pressure cooker yet. So all these were done. Um, the broke boy tech was done in a pot and these little PF thing, I, I sterilized them in the instant pot. Yeah, a lot of people do this. I mean, I just cook rice in mine, but um, yeah, a lot of people seem to use that Instapot to uh, great success. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely worked well. And um, yeah, uh, so yeah, I started growing, as you see, a lot of apes. Uh, I was mm -hmm. interested in them. Um, here, here's an interesting thing. I can shed, shed a little bit of the tidbits for you guys. Um, so I tried doing casing layers on apes because like this is whole thing of like uh this casing layers help them like do they need casings like how do you like how do you grow apes like are they hard to grow like they're they're not hard to, to grow you can treat them just like any other cubes you don't need this additional casing layer i was experimenting it um so what i ended up finding is that i put a little layer of just cbg on top of it after it got fully colonized because people say oh, i was supposed to help with them pending and uh all I ended up finding was that they just kind of take a little bit longer to colonize them, and they still pin the, the same way as they kind of did before. Um, yeah, I, I, when I first was growing in tubs, I pseudo-cased everything, and, yeah. and I do not actually almost ever do that anymore. There's only a couple varieties I still like to do that for. Yeah, I find just casing right at the beginning after spawning is good enough, and you just let it run, and there you go. Yeah. Yep. Here's some more. Um, I really love the shoe boxes when I was starting out. So here, um, I had, I, I guess, I don't know. These, these people were calling them like Starry Night Apes, whatever mm -hmm. the, the Fino looking things. Um, I didn't know it at the time. I, I just, you know, just got it kind of an apes fringe from somewhere and went with it and that's kind of what it gave me um yeah the shoe boxes were a great way to, to kind of get started for 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 this uh i still love shoe apes. boxes man uh, i'm not mad at shoe boxes at all yeah Works. um so yeah i, I kind of experimented with things going you know bigger going smaller and uh yeah i, I find uh, it, it works out either way they, yeah, they're, you know, they're simultaneously very picky and not picky at all. Nope. Yeah, no, those look good, man. Yeah, I like those Starry Nights. I, that's a variety I have only failed at. Um, yeah, it doesn't like me. Uh, interesting picture here down at the bottom, um, bottom right here. Um, these these are apes that I I took a clone of one of my apes and I gave it to one of my buddies, and uh, he grew them out and he got these instead. Hmm. Um, very interesting looking, and uh, I I told him yo take a clone of that like give it back to me like right. I want to try to work with it. Um, so we kind of like nicknamed this the, the strawberry apes because of just how it looks. It's just mm -hmm. kind of I don't know. Oh, it's just I a, see a it. Weird looking ape like it mm -hmm. just, I've never seen ape look like that before. Um, so I wanted to try and, and clone that and, and replicate that again. Um, and I, I don't think I was ever able to, to get them looking like that anymore. Well, at least you got a picture. 
That's I, I I have grown many fruit where I'm like, God damn it, why didn't I get a picture of that? I get lazy. Yeah. There's more apes. Um, so I was so fascinated with apes. I just kept um, cloning them out. Um, as you can see, they, they started getting bigger and bigger. Um, I kind of like uh, nicknamed these like the, the the King Kongs. This mm -hmm. is how how big they they look. They're, they're just they're just so cool. Um, here, oh, here's yeah. more of them. Yeah, they get pretty um, big. I, I was able to get them pretty big, just, you know, constantly cloning all the big ones. And uh, this is kind of what I resulted uh, with. It's, it's kind of cool to kind of see them uh, become like that. Uh, yeah, uh, here's some Ooh. more of them. Those look cool. Now, so I'm also noticing you, like me, um, in the beginning, everybody told me, oh, you got to have three, four inch cake. And uh, just through sort of the logistics of me, you know, spawning in jars and stuff like that, I ended up doing thinner cakes, and I have never regretted that. I, I get really nice first flushes. I, I maybe I'm not getting five or six flushes out of them, but yeah, that you, you're kind of right where I try to be at with with my shoe boxes, which is maybe just shy of two inches, like maybe inch and inch and three quarters. Yeah, it's it's not too too bad. Um, I I like. Uh, yeah, you you can definitely get a good decent flush out of just a, a little bit yeah. of a yeah a bit of substrate. I was watching somebody recently on Facebook. I can't remember who it was, but they were going extremely thin and still getting flushes that basically look like that. And it's like, oh shit, maybe I need to try this. That kind of looks cool. I. I would have never thought you could go quite that thin. I would have guessed it would have dried out too soon, but they say it works, so I like to fuck around and find out. Yeah, well, what happened here is as they were colonizing, they shrunk the entire thing down to, mm -hmm. you know, that little bit. So when it oh, came wow. out of that little 12 quart shoebox. Um, oh, yeah, I'm seeing that now. Yeah, that's quite a shrink. Yeah. That 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 was the first flush too. It was like I was amazed to see that that can happen, um, and and all of this is just pretty much ran with this this shoebox and uh, pretty much dub sub style. Mm -hmm. uh, here's more uh, that I've harvested. Uh, here's some. Um, I always tell these are PE sevens. Okay. Like I'm just so fascinated in how uh, they they look. Uh, these are Avery albinos. Yeah, those look good. These are Martiniques. Like I just kind of went out and just wanted to find all different types, and you know they're they're pretty cool. And uh, here here's on uh, the next one here. Uh, it's kind of very interesting. I don't know how this happened, um, but it's just a cool picture. So. Yeah, what is that? Did, is it like it. A, just a lot of teeny pins? Um, so then... yeah, it's it's a, it's a whole bunch of aborts, uh -huh. and um, for and the just... longest time, I could not figure out why I was getting so many aborts, and uh, I I just don't know. Um, I've set I've given it the same conditions as as I've done with everything else, uh, hmm. yet for some reason these just would not work out. And what kind of sucks at the time is I kind of basically like made spores to agar. Okay. And then I just went from there directly into liquid culture. So I didn't. Um, so what I thought might have happened was maybe I have selected out some bad genetics. Probably, yeah. And uh, it wouldn't take to my fruiting conditions. And what I've noticed is when I try using that same culture again, the same thing would happen again. Yeah. And, and I would just get tons of aborts. I'm like, what the heck is going on with these? And uh, that's kind of what I've chalked it up to. But honestly, I, I just don't, don't know what else could, could have caused this. It's just a cool picture. Um, so what happened was I just kind of let it go. I kind of kept it fruiting. Mm -hmm. And eventually one pin decided to like just like grow and like make its way up. <laughs> and poke it's like its not, head Yeah, it's like a giant like, pin. <laughs> That's cool. And that was the only fruit I was able to get from there. And uh, I, I took the spores from it. And I'm like, I'm just going to start these back from spores and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, see what it does and, and work, work clones out from there. 
we've all done it, right? We've all had a very pathetic, you know, third flush, and we're walking out to the dehydrator in the garage holding, like, three fruits. <laughs> I've definitely done that. I'm like, man, why am I doing all these extra flushes? I'm not getting enough fruit out of them. Yeah. Ooh, what's this? Um, so these are the, the strawberry apes that my oh, right. um, cool. friend tried to give me. So I made a transfer out, and this is kind of what it took to... Um, I was using my um, potato flakes recipe, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> this this is what I ended up with. Um, pretty cool looking, so I just snapped yeah, a picture of that. Cool. Uh, let's see, next picture... These are golden teachers. Oh no! Why did you move the slide? Oh, oh there we go. Uh, let's see. I moved it. Oh, did, it okay. did it move for you? Uh, anyway, okay. Yeah. I see golden teachers now. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yep. So Great these are canopy. done in a unmodified tub, actually. Like what is that? Twenty, thirty quart. I'm um, trying to remember here. I think this was either 66 or 80 quart. Oh, big. Remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, they got pretty big then. Nice. Um, let's see. These are pretty interesting right here. Um, I like your. I like how you slid it as as, as the fruit was growing that direction. That's a that's an advanced move right there. Yes. So what I was doing is I was just adjusting the fresh air exchange for uh -huh. this little dub tub right here. Um, yeah. So it's it's kind of fascinating to me how gigantic some of these things can get coming out of like this little shoe box. This is like a six core right. shoe box. And I just couldn't believe this this is even possible. Uh, so yeah, this one, I. I used this one for the um, clone video on YouTube. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of chopped off the head of that one because it was going to sporulate over everything because it was like the first one that, that kind of came up out of it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And uh, Yeah, look at that sucker. It was massive. Yeah, and that, that came out from a clone. Nice. So, Here's who's going moving on. Um, I started uh, checking out Enigma. Oh, I now, thought that was white frosted flakes there for a minute. Oh, that is Enigma. Okay. That, that's my nice. first time um, with the Enigmas. Um, I got it as a gift from um, another uh, guy in the area. Um, mm -hmm. So my buddy that had the strawberry apes, he got it from his buddy over in like New Jersey, and uh, he, he gave me a plate of this. And yeah, it's pretty cool how how different looking they are compared to other cubes they really are they they are their own thing yep so from there um i ended up uh moving so i got out the apartment and you know i, I moved to have a place now and uh, i started up um the pgc lab okay so I, I wanted to, you know, get into making more content and getting things going. Let me see. Let me get this. I don't know why. I yeah. think I think you're not for some reason it's not clicking forward, but I'm I'm going off your cues and I'm trying to trying to keep us going here. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so this is my lab at the time. Still looking better than my lab, but uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I I hate working in a basement. You're, everybody that has like a finished room. I'm so jealous of you guys. Oh, All right. So there. are you? You want to try to advance the slide? Can. Yeah. Yeah. I can. I can. I'm wondering yeah. Why you no. Can. I got it okay, now. Okay. You got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, go for it. Keep going. All right. So from there, uh, I got a microscope. I got to uh, check it into spores. Yep. Like the these are some golden halos. Very cool. Yeah, it's crazy with the things you can see underneath the microscope. Um, and they're they're not that that hard to use really. Just gotta start messing around. All right, next one here. 
These are some Jack Frost. Those look great. Yep, so I kind of started uh, branching out and um, meeting and talking to connecting with other mycologists and um, seeing what other genetics that are out there. Right. And uh, I, I started to try and find different varieties that uh, just look different, like unique. Like that's the thing that I, I loved about these, that um, you can create this, you know, people can create this by crossbreeding them. Yep. Yeah, and they are, I mean, the Jack Frost, you know, Dave really outdid himself. They're, they're, they're an iconic fruit for sure. They're just, you know, they're just stunning. Yeah, I just love the bluegills on them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, a lot of this, you know, kind of influences um, the, the art on, on the cards. <clears throat> e easy to be inspired by some of these fruit for sure now okay here you have one of my favorite traits which is the little ripply i see them a lot on like melmac to take a while or if i like uh give them a little bottom watering during a flush I, I tend to get more of this i love that gnarly stipe that's just one of my favorite things i think it looks so cool now what yeah. so what variety is this still uh jack frost no these are tats it's tats okay cool yeah, I, I don't know how they ended up looking like this. this is, I've, I've, you know, seen Tats a couple, lots of mm -hmm. times, but I've just never seen them end up, like, becoming like this. Uh, so this is, like, a one-time thing that, that I've noticed, and, yeah, I, I just couldn't replicate it anymore. But they're pretty cool, so I just took a snap of it. Uh, these here are some ODPs. Yeah, that's one of my favorites right there. Um, they are very easy to harvest. They have a nice density to them. They're handsome. Yeah, it's it's one of my probably top fives. I love those guys. And from there, these are uh, the ghosts that came out. Yeah. I so like those when I first. Caps. When I first heard of this, I was like, what the heck are ghosts? Like, I looked into mm -hmm. this, and like, they, they call them ghosts because they look like little Pac-Man ghosts. Yep. So, yeah, it, it was just crazy to see them have those weird-looking things, and I just wanted to collect them. Like, <laughs> it yeah. was just so cool. One day I hope to cross and create a, a ghost hybrid that's uh, got a rainbow cap with a nice smiley face on it, but I have a feeling that's going to take me a while. Hard to, hard to get that, that morphology. Yeah. Just keep trying. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one here. These are some blue ape reverts. Like them. So w these are the first, uh, ones that I've come across that, that kind of like show a blue, trait in the caps mm -hmm. um they're they're to me i they're one of my favorites they're they're to me they they well to me they're they're definitely my favorites because um it's kind of interesting the story that came about getting these let's hear uh, it <laughs> so with i these, want all the stories right <laughs> So with these, they came from uh, one of my uh, buddy and friend. Uh, he, he came on as a supporter uh, onto the Discord channel, and he was just, me and him was just chatting, and uh, I was just kind of helping him along. Like at that time, when I kind of started, I was just kind of helping people in Discord and and you know try to be helpful where I can because I wasn't big at that time. Um, but you know, I was helping him out, and I was starting, and he ended up um, growing a. Uh, the ape 1.0 out okay. and out of his flush he ended up with a one fruit that had a uh that reverted and you know showed uh gills and it actually had spores on the gills mm -hmm. uh and that's something you don't normally see that comes out of ape <clears throat> right. so he, he took the spores from the spore print from there sent it to me and uh he said hey check this out like these are from, these came from my ape tub like I, I want you to try to like see you know see what they'll do for you so at the time i was um also 
um, checking out the eight reverts from um, Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, uh, be, me being so fascinated with apes again, uh, uh, I wanted to distinguish his ape from the Jake's ape. So I, I put a B on it, and uh, the B was just kind of um, for his initials. And um, afterwards, uh, when I grew them out, they look completely different than the other ape reverts from Jake. So uh, they have these blue traits, and uh, from there, I decided to just kind of call them blue ape reverts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I kind of kept the B kind of like a, an old to, to him for it. Um, uh, poor, poor guy. Uh, he, he ended up um, with like a uh, respiratory condition from oh. the spores. It's one of those rare oh, things. I've heard a few people have this happen. <clears throat> it's yeah. one of those rare things that can happen. Um, but he, yeah, he's pretty much like allergic to spores. So he, he could not like continue um, doing it. So right. he, he sent it to me and he was like, hey, try, try and work with this. So that that's kind of where the origin of the Blue Ape Reavers can, came out. Yeah, I like those little, the little blue umbos on there look cool. So what's interesting is I kept cloning these out, and eventually they stopped producing um, dark spore pigments on their gills. Do they, I mean, do they produce any spores, or do they just change color? Um, they still produce spores. I believe they're translucent now, but I, okay. I haven't I haven't been able to, to get a hold of them again to, to double check on these, uh, the scope. Um, but yeah, I've kind of started to try and go back to spores from them again to try and get new um, phenotypes from them. Very cool. Look at those. These are some more enigmas. Oh yeah, those are great. Now, how do you harvest your enigma? Do you use a special <laughs> knife or... Um, the scissors, just, it, the scissors, and um, exacto knife, nice, or a blade, fruiting fruit knife, whatever you can. Mm-hmm. They're, kind, they're kind of a, a weird thing to kind of they to harvest it. They, they kind of crumble apart as you kind of like right. go at them. They're, they're very fragile. Uh, next slide here. Ooh. Loving that. What is that? This is iceberg. Looks very cool. Yeah, these came from uh, Miss Mush. They're hers, yep. See, uh, we're going to have her and uh, a few other female mycologists on in December, and uh, we'll definitely be talking about her iceberg. Um, I have not grown them yet. They look super fun to grow, so hopefully I'll, I'll get the chance here shortly. Yeah, it's very interesting what they kind of portray out on the, the caps there. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's some more old DPEs. Oh, yeah. Here's some more of the Blue Ape Reverts. Ooh, I like that. So as they get bigger, the, the, the blue remains on the, the, the nipple portion, but then it kind of whitens out, I guess, is what I'm seeing there. Yes. Gotcha. I like those. I've not grown anything that looked like those. Me neither. (laughs) So they're they're, unique. That's why they're one of my favorites. Or I would say right now they are my favorites until I can kind of come up with uh, you know my own PGT thing. Mm -hmm. And you know I I would really like to experiment um, crossing these with others and and seeing what kind of uh, traits can kind of come up from that. And next slide. These, I don't know. I, I took this cool picture here. It, it looks like, uh, I don't know. What would you say that looks like? Man, I don't know. But my buddy, uh, Mushman9000 on Instagram, he has a variety that basically just looks like a, a, a tub full of stones. And this looks very similar to that. So these ended up being the ghosts. Oh, now did they ever ultimately develop the ghost cap, or did they stay like this? They kind of just stayed like this. Uh, one thing I've noticed with ghosts is they kind of stay pretty small. Yeah, they're oh, they are definitely small. 
Now, is this the same? Is this the same as that last time, or is this a different type of ghost? This is the same. It is okay. Yep. So once they kind of start getting um, blued out, or they kind of stop maturing, you can't. You know, they're not progressing in size anymore. Um, That's kind of when I start to get them. Now, is this more the the Blue Ape Revert? No. Is blue? What is this? Uh, this is uh, another genetic called Phobos. Oh, yes, Phobos. I have also not grown Phobos. God, what am I doing with my life? I'm just going <laughs> to work every day fucking wasting my time. God, I got fruit to grow. <laughs> Too much. Yeah, those are cool. Everybody loves growing these. I They remind me, uh, a while back, I was super obsessed with growing stormtroopers. Uh, my buddy Dirty South uh, came up with this little uh, albino uh, riptide or tidal wave revert. And yeah, it looks kind of like Avery's, but uh, different different feel when you're on them. And uh, they just pack a tub. And these Phobos always seem to just pack a tub like to the, to the hilt. Yes, I, I think if you, you know, have very healthy grain spawn genetics fruiting conditions it's you, you can pack the tubs too yep Moving on, we, these are haolis god damn it pgt all you're doing is just showing me f- freaking varieties i have never fruited you're making me feel extremely inadequate right now god damn it well, the thing is, uh, it's 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 kind of crazy how there's I, I've been able to just connect with people in the mycology mm-hmm. community and and see what they're up to and kind of like trade and talk with them. Yeah. And that's kind of how I made friends doing this. Oh yeah, that's and, half the fun. I mean, I remember the first time I did a trade and I put a little letter in it and I got a little letter back and I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I'm in elementary school writing pen, like writing my pen pal. And I loved it. It was fun. Mailing things again and, yeah, like trading prints and stuff like that. Uh, uh, all, those are all these little nooks and crannies of the, the, the home mycology uh, hobby that just make it, uh, make it a joy. It right, does. Now, what's that? Uh, these are, are these apes these again. Dark-ass caps. Holy shit. Uh, I might have let these go a little bit longer than they should have. Mm-hmm. Um, those look like they work. Yeah. Those look like they work. Ooh. Thrasher? What is that? These are SV10s. Oh, yep. Uh, side team. Yes, side team. Yeah, very cool. Yep. Yeah, SV10. He's got uh, many SVs. I, I think I've only ever received... 10 and one other one and i think i've only successfully grown them once unfortunately but they were very cool they kind of reminded me of uh either ape tower or uh thrasher a little bit it kind of yeah, does very, very cool fruit here we have some apes apes what do you mm-hmm. like apes i love apes i know i'm kidding you'd grow a lot of cool apes with a lot of you know, dark blue caps, though. I feel like your apes look cooler than my apes. I need to start growing some of your apes. Um, I've noticed some of them have cream color uh, caps, too. But I, I've noticed as they let it go, they, they eventually start to darken. Mm-hmm. Oh, dang. Look at those caps. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you kind of take them back from spores. You kind of run them back out. Mm-hmm. Um they, they just look different. Now these I, uh, are worked out from uh, Manor from Heaven. Nice. So he, I think he was um, doing a collab with Baz, mm-hmm. the Sidium, and uh, he had some um, swabs available f- uh, to do like a charity thing. And I was able to grab some and I, I worked out his PE and uh, I cloned out um, some phenotypes that I wanted and uh, I picked up an albino during the M- MS escrow, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I just worked it out until I came up with these, and I just love how they look. 
So, yeah, yeah there's I, some I, wild, the wild like uh, frilly caps in there. I like those. Yep. And uh, as of recent, I started to try and um, check out uh, Pan Science. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what, what led up to me recently, and uh, I was able to get a, I would I would call it a pretty successful. Um, oh yeah, okay. Now what what kind of pans are these? Uh, these are pan sign blue springs. Blue springs, okay. I like these guys. They're, I mean, I'm a big fan of spaghetti, so that might might be influencing this, but these look very cool. Yes, they, they're very skinny, um, and what I've noticed with them in the tubs is they they want more fresh air, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't uh, provide them enough in here, but I'm trying. So yeah. one of the things I tried to do at the time was I put it in front of my flow hood to try and like blow, try to let like the air exchange happen through the, um, the filter patches. Mm-hmm. Um, and I noticed it, it wasn't really doing too 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 well to try to like provide enough for them. So what I ended up doing is I cracked the lid onto it and I let it run. Um, and then I noticed uh, all the condensation dried up. My 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 every I'm trying everything up now. Yeah. Um, so I tried to mist it and then uh, I tried to mist the sides and then the mist kind of touched the 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 pans on the outsides and they kind of started turning blue. Yep. So they're very sensitive to to moisture. And, Ooh, uh, it's kind of what they ended up kind of going with. I kind of let it go to see how far they can get. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I've noticed with them, they could not get enough fresh air exchange to be able to open get up their cap, caps yeah. to, to right. get a spore print out of. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I, you know, think that I'm still trying to experiment with this a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, see where I can come up with to try and provide them with a good adequate condition inside of a tub um, so I'm doing a little bit more experimenting and uh, I kind of want to you know share what I've learned after I've experimented a little bit more um, nice yeah yeah I just grew some gnats I had the same problem where you know, I, I knew I needed more fresh air and the more I gave, the more it would dry out. And then the like the little like blanket of mycelium turned blue uh, out of being dried out a little bit. And then I, I did the same thing. And yeah, I probably just need a Martha 10 at some point. Yep. So I'm yeah. going to try with the Martha 10s again and uh, with tubs and, you know, see where they go. Yep. Just got to keep playing around. Ooh. So Look this that. is what the, the lab looks like currently. Looking good. Got to have, uh, I, I talk to a lot of newbies and I just say, man, buy some shelving, dude. You, you got to buy some shelving. Uh, so I, I, I'm weird when I see a, a lab with a lot of shelving. I'm like, I want that lab. Yeah. Shelving definitely makes things a lot. A lot keep, more keeps convenient. me organized. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And if you get things on wheels, definitely like get wheels for them. Yes, wheels are also nice. I do not like dragging things around. I try to keep everything where it's supposed to be, but yeah, I got a couple carts. It's nice to have them on wheels. And when you're cleaning, sometimes it's nice to just be able to move the cart. Yep. And sure. on the uh, the right side, I have a little sticker board, mm -hmm. a little slap board. So if you've kind of been in the mycology community, you kind of accumulate these over time, yep. and that's kind of where they're at. Um, they, for me, they, they symbolize, you know, the connections I've made with yep. uh, mycologists out there, and it's, you know, it's freaking awesome. I agree. The, the slap, that's like, you know, just another little sliver of, of the, the at-home game that, that is fun. I agree. All right, now what what do we got here? Uh, just more shots of of uh, the lab. So uh, I'd like to try and keep things very organized. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, this pegboard here I got from IKEA. Oh uh, yeah, my daughter has one of those. Well, so I, I, I slotted it with everything that I have uh, that I would need in front of the flow hood is right at my hand. I just grab right. from there and and uh, work with it. Very and cool. then here are um, the Blue Ape Reavers that I've started back from Spores again. 
Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting various different All types, types of, of genetics. Yep. Yeah. Popping up here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of working these out to, to kind of see what I can do in terms of isolating um, from, you know, these genetics. Very cool. So uh, that was, you know, here's what I like. It just makes me feel like, oh, PGT, he's just like me. He's, you know, growing a lot of mushrooms and learning and all that kind of stuff. Now, here's what I want to talk about. The difference here, though, is, let me pull this off. Unlike most of us, you decided to bring us along in your journey and uh, share your knowledge and, and the things that you figured out as you were, you know, learning different aspects of cultivation. Um, can we talk a little bit about what that journey has been like? You know, I know you said earlier in the beginning, it was just like something fun to do because you liked Photoshop, you, you, you know, liked uh, mess around and all that. But at, at some point, it obviously, especially as it got traction and it was obvious that people really craved the content, you took it more seriously. You want to talk a little bit about that change and what that was like, what was challenging about it, um, you know, what was really fun, just a little bit more of a understanding about what that journey is like. Um, it, it kind of, you can kind of see it in the, the artwork that I've kind of shown mm -hmm. going across that, right when that change that we decided with the mascot is kind of when we kind of gained enough traction at that time. I think maybe I had around like 10K okay around that time and i'm like this is you know getting i've never imagined i would get 10k subscribers and i was just trying to do something for fun and at that point I made me realize that hey uh this is there, there's some expectations on me to kind of like continue this and i wanted right. to, to try and continue it and, and go forward with it and then i kind of started to it, it kind of became more like a a business at that point i kind of started having to having to look at it more like a business right. um because it, it, at the time i guess it for me it's just a side hustle so mm -hmm. uh i never intended for any of this to, to really go this way but but see that's how because then you were doing it for all the right reasons you're not that guy who's like money 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 you know everybody can see through that shit, right so you you were having fun and enjoying it. Now, I agree. I mean, I get people, I, shit, man, I only got a thousand subscribers and I get people going, please keep making these podcasts. Please keep making them. I love them. I look forward to them. And it's really true. Like people, you know, they, they start expecting you when you start taking, you feel it's like a, an obligation that, that you really have to keep doing this because people are, are asking you to do it. Yes, and uh, the pressure kind of built onto me, and I, I, you know, when I first started it, I was like making like uh, videos each week and going at it. Like I did like ten straight weeks of it, and I mm -hmm. just got completely burnt out, and I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was just way too much on my, you know, plate that. Uh, me working a full-time job trying to juggle this is just getting way too much. And I, right. I kind of had to consider, you know, making changes and adjustments to, to kind of adjust and make things work. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, you know, since I'm trying to figure this all out and get better at it and make better podcasts, I watch these content videos on YouTube and, you know, a lot of people are out there going every week, make a video every week, keep it going more, 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 more. And then other people do videos where it's like, yeah, but you know, if, if, if you're really not putting your all into it and not able to make a really great thing every week, then don't feel like you got to do them every week. You know, quality is definitely more important than quantity. Yeah. So I kind of took a step back from that and now I'm just right. kind of working on multiple projects. Um, underneath but i'm not trying to like pressure myself into right. a certain timeline for it i'm just trying to go at a pace i'm comfortable with that so that i can make the quality content that i yep. know that people would really enjoy well we love them i mean i can't tell you you're one of maybe two or three content creators on youtube who when people start asking me questions 
you're very frequently, you know, the, the video I'm sending them to, oh, here, go watch this, and then we can talk. If, you know, watch, watch PGT's video on this, and, and, and if you still have questions, come talk to me. Um, and I would like to talk about that a little bit, because my experience was you were, hands down, one of the clearest and most concise content creators um, there were many out there. I mean, maybe not like a million, but you know, there, there were plenty and you were just immediately digestible, listenable. Um, I didn't feel like you were wasting my time. You were, you were just there to give me the information and get me growing. And you were for sure seminal in, in my early, uh, cultivation, uh, uh some of all those early grows. Um, did you, I want to, I want to hear a little bit about how conscious that was. Like, were, were you scripting your shows out? Were you, um, you know, what was that like to go? Cause I have to assume you said, I want to be clear. I want to be the guy that's making really clear, understandable videos. How did you make that a goal? And you know, what did you do to accomplish that? Well, I kind of just thought about what I wanted to see in the YouTuber that mm -hmm. covers this kind of thing. And I personally like YouTubers that kind of keep things simple, straight to the yeah. point, concise. And uh, I, I try to keep things short because of that, with that in mind, so it's because that's the kind of content that I personally like. Yeah. So I think maybe other people might vibe with it. So that's kind of why I went with it. And you, so, so let me ask you, so, I mean, they're just exceptionally clear and, and easy to follow and understandable. Were you plotting out each step and, and really trying to craft it before you filmed it? So it starts with kind of like an idea mm -hmm. of what I want to make the video about. And then I would um, try and come up with the script for it or what kind okay. of points that I would want to cover on it. And then I would try and gather the, the footage for it. And then nice. from there, I would take the footage, I would um, edit it, uh, voice over it and uh double check it here and there yep. a couple of times make sure everything is good and uh yeah send it out very cool yeah well i appreciate that and uh uh i tell you what uh content creators that i really like in other realms you know outside of mycology um i the number one thing that gets me to press a subscribe button is, is that they're delivering content I want and they're not boring me with stuff that I don't want. So I, I really appreciate that. Now, of course me, I'm a fucking moron. I do the complete opposite. I do long form content, you know, where we go really exhaustively in depth, uh, talking about stuff, but I do appreciate your kind of content and, and, uh, every new video I, I look forward to seeing. So I appreciate that. Maybe one day I'll learn how to shut my mouth and, you know, we'll have very concise, efficient conversations. But I, for me, this this is working right now, and people seem to en enjoy it. When um, now you said you know you're making the kind of content you wanted to watch. I, I will say that um, I spend a lot of time listening to Yoshi's podcasts as I'm doing transfers or building sterilizers, and uh, so I think that maybe is why I get into that because, you know, I'm, I'm keeping up with all of his podcasts and I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry to get into that more. as well. I'm sorry to get into that as well. Check yeah, out it's... Yoshi's podcast. Yeah, Check man. out your podcast. And, it's, uh... it's just something to listen, right? You just put it on and go to work and it's cool, man. It gets you in the vibe, right? It gets you in the, the Michael mode. Totally so does. It totally does. Something that can yeah. like keep you there company as you're you're going along with it and you're kind of exactly. absorbing things in as, as you're kind of doing it. Yeah. Um cool man, where where are we at here? Um all right, we only have hundreds of people listening in right now. Uh a testament to your popularity and fandom for sure. Um how about we open it up for some questions here? Um I think I've been asked about 50 if I scroll back through here. But uh, anybody watching, if you have uh, something you want to ask PGT, uh, post it below and we'll get it up on the screen. And I'm going to, while you're doing that, I'm going to scroll back here and try to find some, some questions I have missed. 
because we are having too much fun here. All right, here we go. Um, I'll start with this so I can still scroll back here. Uh, Harris Babic asks, what's your favorite substrate for PEs? Um, <clears throat> majority of my substrate is CVG. Okay. Have you done any experimenting with additives and, uh, you know, uh, PUSAB and stuff like that? And if so, what, what, what did you find? Uh, yeah, I've done, I've done additives. I've, I've tried Dr. Mike's product. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I find they they help out um, with my CBG grows. It, it you know I've noticed more I get more out of it than I don't. So I was kind of like why why wouldn't you want to use it? Uh, in terms of poo, I'm with you. I I have experimented with that. Um, I personally don't find it makes that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm i you know there's so much that we don't quite know for sure. Right. about cultivation so i'm in the process of just trying to experiment and mm -hmm. learn to experience and you know once i kind of get a better grasping that's kind of when i would you know once i get a better understanding i feel that right. i can now explain to other people about it yeah i was talking to so uh my buddy metal Hetty, he did a side by side and then um poo versus i think it was uh Humble Fungus's poo substrate versus just a CV substrate. And then he sent in uh, the fruits for HPLC testing. And there was like, there was a bump uh, in potency for the, for the poo, but was it an, was it significant enough that, that I would want to start running it and risk more contamination? Probably not. Also one, you know, side by side, we, we definitely need more and more of this HPLC testing and, and more data to start making more conclusions for sure. But I think some people just, it's fun, right, to go, I have, you know, I have exotic manure and it does more closely replicate, you know, what they're getting in nature. So I think some of the people who really get the poo sub dialed in, uh, they surely have some gorgeous grows. I mean, some of the, the greatest cultivators on Instagram that just have, you know, canopies to die for, it seems like more often than not, those guys are the ones who are running poo sub. I have also kind of feel like you. I, I've never felt the need to, to run it because I'm getting good results without it. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, from uh, Forbidden Flowers Farm, BCN. <coughs> Best grain and method to recommend for beginners? Favorite grain and what do you rec recommend for somebody new starting out? I'm oh, sorry, I pulled that off. Uh, best grain... I'm in the process of trying to find out the best grain. I'm mm -hmm. doing a big grain experiment to, to kind of run all the different types of grains across and kind of see what exactly it, it can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, my favorite, I would say, is probably millet, oats, mm -hmm. and maybe birdseed. Yeah, I like seed. Birdseed um, was my first, and I like birdseed. Birdseed works. I would say for beginners, um, the Broke Boy tech with the brown rice is definitely the most beginner friendly way of getting in so you don't need a pressure cooker um and yeah it's just it's just brown rice is just extremely nutritious just for yeah. mycelium it seems all right we're gonna keep going here all right this is a great question uh i deal i've dealt with this a couple times uh when you're mid-grow how do you plan for going out of town Nathaniel brown good question hmm um, so what you could do is you could, uh, put some stuff in the fridge to slow down colonization. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the lower the temperatures are, the, the slower things go. Uh, just try and plan around that. I mean, if you're going to end up, you know, having something that's going to fruit right before you go out of town, well, unfortunately. It's a bad scene. Yes. Yeah. It's a bad scene. You're going to come back. It's just nothing but like. Yeah. Darkness. It's an abyss. <laughs> yes. You open it up and you're like, wow, there is an actual black hole in my house. Um, all right. Quantum, quantum uh, Mutant Aw Q. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, when harvesting, do you clip below the mycelium or leave fruit? 
Uh, I've never seen a clear video of reaching into a crowded tub with a sharp object. So I find it, it I like using both ways. It kind of depends on, on what's happening. If, if mm -hmm. it's just way too much, then I'm just going to have to go through it with the knife. Uh, but if it's sparish or something, I, I like to kind of pluck them out and, and clean themselves right. out. So what I've noticed over time, kind of, even if you cut them off, they'll still recolonize and they'll start to find new areas to create pins out of right. and, and shoot out of. Um, so the stumps and stuff doesn't harm them per se. It, it kind of recolonizes back into it. Uh, but it does take up space that you yeah. could have more fooding there. So depending on how clean you can clean your surface off, um, you can you know get a better flush. Yeah, I so I had a friend back in the day say, well, you know, I kind of like just cutting very uh, carefully, you know, with a scalpel. Try try to leave that that root base, so I'm not disturbing any of the substrate. But I, I found exactly what you said, which is if I then have, especially for grows that have a lot of clusters, you might be kind of taking up a lot of surface area by leaving some of that. Whereas if, if I can get that off and I can do a light scrape of the mycelium remist, fruit can now grow anywhere. Yep. Yeah, that, that seemed to... That's what I've noticed. Okay, here's here's <laughs> here's the funny one. Uh, Jesus on steroids. How can you really claim to be from Philly if you haven't said John once in this interview? <laughs> oh. Funny, funny. Okay. Yeah, that comes up sometimes. I, yeah. I, I don't have to say John all the time, but uh -huh. I, I do love saying John all the time. <laughs> but John's awesome. That's funny. Uh, Okay, super specific. Hate to put you on the spot, um, but Mesopotamia wants to know, I wonder if PGT framed the poster of the buck in a suit I got him for Christmas last year. I yes. love that your friends are your your friends and Patreons and whatnot are, are buying you Christmas presents. Um, so you did. Yes, I did. Um, nice. I might be able to find a picture of it here. Cool. All right, you do that. I'm going to keep pulling up some questions. Okay. Um, this is interesting. Uh, Terry Parker, ever tried using a Bunsen burner to create a sterile workspace? I don't. Do you mean like to sterilize tools and stuff like that, I'm assuming? Um, uh, I've used a little torch. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not used a Bunsen burner. Uh, I've used a torch, and then I've started going into using um, induction sterilizers. They're cool. I'm also a fan. Uh, all right, uh, Joshua Maud, preferred tubs and tech. Um, I, I think the videos speak for themselves, but you do seem to be a shoebox, dub tub kind of guy. Am I right? Yes, I am the, I'm the tub guy. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, just for people, you know, I think a lot of people, they start out with the six quart shoe boxes and then they feel like they must move on from there as, as they grow as cultivators. But, you know, PGT is still using them. Yoshi uses six and 20 quarts all the time. Um, you know, for if you're not trying to grow a lot of mushrooms, but you're trying to, you know, work some genetics and hunt for some new phenotypes and stuff like that. There's times when it makes absolute sense to use a smaller container, a tried and true tech like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot less to deal with. And if you end up with contamination, then it, it won't be so bad yeah. as, as losing something big. All right. Um, this is a cool question um, from IMP. Uh, can you infinitely do grain to grain transfers? I am not going to live long enough to answer that question, but uh, he's saying I've done three now from the original batch and wondered if, uh, if I'll need to restart with liquid culture. Have you ever gone and just grain to grain endlessly? No, I have not. I have not either. But that, that's, that's an interesting, you know, thing we can mm -hmm. always, you know, look into. Now, I, I am a big proponent of um, 
grown in, in a, a quart jar and then inoculating. So one thing I don't like about grain spawn in bags is it for me, maybe I don't know what I'm doing yet, but it takes too long to colonize. Whereas if, if I sterilize two quarts of grain in a bag and I dump one quart from a, a quart jar of grain spawn, I mean, it takes like, I, I can blink and the, the rest of that, that bag is colonized. So I like to, if I'm doing if my ultimate goal is to have like a three pound bag of spawn, I like to do one quart to two pound um, grain to grain that way. But I've never kept going. I mean, I'm, I'm like PGT. I'm trying to grow all the new stuff. And so I don't keep one thing going for too long. But I don't see why you, I mean, why don't you find out for us? I, I bet you can probably keep going quite a while. I think you can. I just don't know how long, but. You probably can. It's but it seems pretty fascinating in how it can like replicate itself. Yeah. All right. Here's a good one. Um, Bigger Mush wants to know PGT. How do you treat the substrate between flushes? Do you dunk, miss the tub, nothing? Uh, I dunk them. So I try and get as much water into them mm -hmm. as I can. Uh, mushrooms are like 90% water, so yeah. I figured the more water, the more mushrooms I'll get. Yep. Um, right. So after I dunk them, I just kind of let them go, and uh, if things start to get dry, then I'll miss, but most of the time I let them go, and, and they, they, they do pretty well for the next yeah. flushes. All right, I think we got uh, to go back to um, that original question here. we. I'm assuming this is from one of your uh, people. Yes, this is one of my Patreon supporters here. Very cool. Uh, they sent this to me. Uh, I was flabbergasted when I first saw it because I was not expecting anything like this to ever like, arrive at my door. And I'm like, wow, this is now, so cool. Now, when you sat for this photograph, no, I'm kidding. There you go, guys. This is what he looks like in real life. A real, authentic. Now, he didn't put the mushroom on top. Why not? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, maybe this is a, from a time when PGT didn't have mushrooms on his mind yet. Yes, okay. That could be an early photo from the early years. All right, here's a good question. Um, Temple of Shrooms. How do you get consistent ape grows? Um, is there anything you're doing specifically? Uh, you definitely seem to have some really packed tubs. Um, or do you find that it's hit or miss with that strain? Uh, it's hit or miss, really. Okay. Um, I've had tubs that are just embarrassingly throwing out fruits in here. And I had mutated tubs come out as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not always like that. But obviously, mm -hmm. these, these are my best um Right. Apes. Yep, you take pictures of your favorite children. That's just how it is. All right, let's see here. Uh, all right, I'm going to pull this up. Uh, seeking something. Uh, what's the biggest non psychedelic realization you both have had from the mushroom as a whole, whether it be community, science, worldview, the way people interact, basically? I don't know what you mean by non psychedelic realization. Um, yeah, I, I would kind of assume it's the other way around, right? Yeah. I don't know about you. For me, it just always makes me appreciate whether it's appreciating things more in the moment of the experience or afterwards. It just seems to make me more connected, gr like more, uh, have more gratitude, more appreciation. I think that would, if I had to sum it up very briefly, it would be that. I would agree. I can't think of any, any better words than what you just said. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Mike Smith. There's only one Mike Smith in the entire United States, so we know who you are, <laughs> Mike Smith. Uh, <laughs> does PGT have any projects that are turning out to be more difficult than he expected? That's a good question. Um, I think that maybe times. you thought you were going to do a video on, but, but the project was just more complicated than, than you thought it was going to be. 
Um, there, there are stuff like that. I, I have a lot of backlog of videos mm -hmm. that I've or footage I've gone through. I just kind of need the time to kind of sit down and filter through all the right. footage and kind of decide what I want to make with with it. Um, I would say right now, pan science are, are kind of what I'm trying to crack at yeah. here. And the other thing I've I've found with them is they take forever to colonize greens. And oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, my experience. Yeah, I've only ever had them on plate, but uh, on plates. But I've had them yeah, stalled out on me a they're, couple they're times. They're slower. And, and I just I just had to scrap it and I just had to start over again. Yeah. And that that's that's the the biggest failure for me is just you know having to start over again. But I mm. I, I just keep trying. Um, all right, just I'm just gonna just to pump our our international viewers here. Uh, Hori size, um, greetings from Bangkok. Great show as always. Thanks for watching. It's definitely cool to see the the spores being spread far and wide, uh, you know, beyond the United States or, or, or England or wherever. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I don't know what time it is there. Tuning in from all over the world. Yeah, I think so. Let's see if it's ten fifty p.m. I believe they're like twelve hours. Like yeah, they're like eleven or twelve hours. Us. Yep. So it's morning there. Um, Let's see here. Oh, all right, my buddy Royce. This is a nice guy. I mean, if you guys if you guys ever get the pleasure of meeting this guy, this is everything you want a, a Myco community member to be. He's just generous, kind, positive. This is a good dude. Um, he wants to know what's your favorite agar. Favorite agar, like in terms of recipe. I, I would assume, yeah. Like, do you have a go-to recipe or? Um, I, my experience, I've, I've tested out with some stuff. I've tested out sorghum, I've tested out the, the potato flakes, I've tested out mm -hmm. malt extract. Um, they, they all seem to do well. It's just depending on what your mycelium's are kind of adapted to in terms of nutrients on how well they do on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so oftentimes now I kind of, uh, default to malt extract, um, mm -hmm. because I just find it a little bit more, more easier to, to prep. Yeah. Good question. All right. And then I, I'll pull this one, but I think we answered this one. Uh, so when you're rehydrating a tub, are you utterly covering the, the cake in water and then dumping it out later? Or are you sort of like bottom sipping the water in there and letting it absorb it, but not like covering the cake? So depending on what I'm doing, if I'm in the, the dub tub shoe boxes, I would put another shoe box on top of it. I put something weighted down to kind of keep the cake down to submerge it underneath okay. the water. And then afterwards, I would just use that same tub on top to just kind of hold the cake in place and just dump it out. Uh, gotcha. If there's anything bigger, I would just kind of pour the water directly on top and just let the cake absorb it through the top and the sides. Mm -hmm. uh, liners, I'd kind of pull them down on the sides to make sure that kind of gets absorption through the sides. And then after that, I take a shoebox lid and I put it on top of the cake. And that allows me to hold that cake oh, in that's place a good idea. as you're draining it so that that cake doesn't crumble and fall apart onto you. So you're kind of holding the, the cake right. as like a platter. So. It's, it's not the cake you're going to eat yet. <laughs> All right. But that, that's, that's what I find over time that has helped me to, to keep you know things clean and tidy when I'm kind of going through that because sometimes when you're going through your flushes it can get messy mm -hmm. all right I'm going to pull this one up just because um, I think this happens to a lot of newbies um, you know it's easy you get into this you're ready to do your first grow you've seen a lot of photos on Instagram or Facebook and you see these gorgeous even canopies and then your first tub because of various factors you might have two fruits you know they're the veils break they're they're basically ready to harvest they're about to dump a crap ton of spores on everything and then you have a bunch of other things that are not ready yet um do you have an approach for handling tubs like that as far as when to harvest how to harvest do you harvest everything all at the same time or do you sort of harvest them as they mature I like to get them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if I notice anything that happens to mature earlier than the rest, I would kind of pick those out individually or I would just, right. you know, 
chop the cap off of them so they don't drop spores. Yeah, I never saw that chop, just chopping the cap off technique. I think I, I like that. I'm going to try that one. Yeah, and then I just kind of wait until they, they all kind of get ready and I just get yep. them all at once. Yeah, I'm never like I'm never concerned with the weight of the fruit. So uh, a lot of people have told me, and I, I this has been my experience that even if it's not fully mature yet, there's plenty of good stuff in there. Even even if it's not fully mature. Okay, oh, yes, this is a good sure. good question. Overjoyed, me too. How much LC do you use with UB Tech? I can't seem to find the sweet spot. Uh. You really don't need a whole lot to get started. I find you can get started with just one milliliter. Okay. All right. Uh, as long, as, long as you have like a, a you know a little bit of it in there, it will start to colonize and it will start to replicate. And uh, I mean, the more you can shoot in, the, the faster it'll grow. But also, you're kind of risking uh, messing up the condition by providing yes. more moisture than intended into your your stuff. Hundred percent. Yeah. I. I. So a, a less a little bit goes a long way. Yes, a little squirt here and there. If you're doing uh, so, if I if I'm doing quart jars, I just do the tiniest little squirt on all four edges, so I can kind of watch it trickle down. And I'm trying to squirt just enough so that it does trickle all the way down through the through the jar, but that I don't want it to start pooling at the bottom. But yeah, you just gotta keep playing around with it to to figure out how much that is. Um, all right, I'm trying to understand this question. Oh, okay, here we go. I got a good one. This is a good, good personal question. Favorite lab tunes? Favorite lab tunes? What kind of music you like to listen to? All towards all types of music. I use Spotify, so. Mm -hmm. I have like over 800 like songs on my Spotify. And what I oh, do is so you... I kind of just shuffle through it as, as I'm just, you know, in there. Nice. Uh, but I guess to kind of be a little bit more specific, uh, to go into it, I kind of like stuff like lo-fi, uh, hip-hop. I've listened mm -hmm. to um, K-pop. I've listened to rap music. Uh, I guess the only thing... I'm not into so much as I guess like jazz or anything like kind of like kind of very niche. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so my no, taste is kind of all over the place. N no like Celtic folk music for you? No. Okay. But I do have a buddy that, that's into that kind of stuff and he, he like sends me like barred versions of songs all the time. Of and I'm course. Like... Of course. Um, let me see. All right, we did that one. All right, here we go. Uh, next, Skyrim. Uh, what's your suggestion for facing uh, my phobia within the community? I'm assuming that means like a fear of mushrooms. I have not encountered that word, but let's assume that's what it means. Like, do you, are you ever talking with people who just seem to hate them and, and like what is your approach people that don't like mushrooms yeah like um i mean for example uh you know like some old fart that grew up during the the 60s and thinks everybody that takes acid is gonna go have a psychotic break and you know, just people that have a very negative perception of it. I, my hunch is he's trying to be an advocate for the benefits of it and maybe encountering some people who are not. My advice would be just start sending those people some of the studies that are coming out or tell them. A, and I hear, I mean, utterly moving anecdotal stories weekly, if not almost daily sometimes of the way that even just a single trip has changed somebody's life for the better. I would probably start telling people those kind of stories. Yeah, it just depends on how open-minded those people um, are towards you know, receiving, yeah. you know, you trying to help, you know, provide them with some more knowledge and, and 
awareness towards the situation, but ultimately it's up to them whether they decide to accept right. that or not and, and, you know, take your suggestions and, and check it out, be open-minded and, and, you know, see what it has to offer. And, but some people can be closed-minded and whatever you try and do, you might not yeah. be able to, to, you know, change their, you know, change I their mean, minds. If that mind is closed, you're wasting your time. That's like... Yeah, at Hanging that out point, on Facebook I, I, would, arguing I would not with people. gravitate with that negativity. I, I would, you know, yeah. try and find some positivity to gravitate yourself towards, too. All right, my buddy. Uh, I'll just pop him up here. I'm going to have this guy on the podcast uh, coming up here. Um, but he just wanted to say, hey, listening while I'm harvesting and pouring plates, thanks for the insights. I think my babies like the convo, too. I hope so. That that uh, good fun guy last week mentioned where he really thought that your attitude and energy that you're giving off when you're working with the mushrooms ha- has an effect. So I hope that's true, and I, I hope we have helped make your mushies feel safe and loved tonight. Yes, yes, you appreciate them, and they appreciate you yeah. back. All right, here's a good one. Um, Christian uh, Herndon wants to know, ever have any issues with no prep millet? I don't know if you've ever run it. You can tell us. Um, I found my results can be inconsistent. Even with the same uh, proportions are used, I'm running uh, 1,125 grams of millet to 500 grams water going for dry grain uh, for LC. Do you ever uh, do no prep? I do. And um, how are his ratios looking to you? About They're looking five. pretty close for yeah, me. Pretty yeah, pretty close for me. Mm-hmm. I, I do about um, 1,000 and like 15, 1,020 um, mm-hmm. to 500 grams of water. Yeah. And I then run, um, depending on jars or bags, you know, 90 minutes or two and a half hours. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they've been pretty good. Uh, the, the part is, you know, having to shake them when they're hot is kind of like yeah. a little bit key to, to getting them to do, do well. If you kind of made them, you kind of let them sit there until they cool yeah, and they, they kind of absorb water. The yeah, they get mushy on the bottom. The top yeah. gets dry and it's, you get inconsistent results because of that. Yeah. Now, I also found that I freaked out because I would have some contaminate on me. So then I was running them three hours. I was PCing them for three hours and I think I was like, drying them out a touch doing that so I, I dialed back on that but yeah i think i always tell people for the no prep because you know you could run a certain batch of grain and then go to the feed store buy another batch of grain that grain might just be slightly different shape it might be taking water a little bit differently so when you get a big you know 50 pound bag of grain you might have to do a run the first time i would always err on the side of a little wet then you can always kind of dial that back for for that batch um, but you sometimes you got to fart around with it and just figure it out. Um, yeah, you you're never gonna like things. dial it in, right? It's never gonna be one number, because like I was saying, you that one number you hit for for one batch of grain might be different uh, two bags down the road. It might just might have to tweak it. You just gotta be ready to do that. All right, I'll pull this one one up real quick. One love. Uh, I heard you mention using an Instapot earlier. Was under the impression they didn't reach high enough pressure. I think they're like twelve or thirteen psi. Do you just extend the cook time? Is is that what you're doing to? Yep, that's yeah. exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, yep. I extend the cook time for them. So it's because they don't get up to fifteen psi, you kind of yeah, have to keep them in there longer to reach a little bit more sterilization. Here's a good one. Um, I think this goes along with something that um, Wumbo Michael brought up, liking to add um, straw to his to his uh, CV. So Tom H asks, uh, wondering if anyone has tried wood added in their substrate, and if cubes would actually utilize it or not. I have no clue about that. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I have not tried it. I, don't, I haven't heard of anyone trying it. Yeah. Uh, but I would imagine cubes could could probably mm -hmm. utilize it. Cubes are very um, sturdy, mm -hmm. and they they can come up in all sorts of unharsh like conditions, not fit for them. They're just so, you know. Yeah. So used to everything. So I I wouldn't be surprised if if you know cubes can, can utilize it. Um, I've I've seen a post a while back. Some people uh, able to grow cubes off of cigarette butts. What? Yeah, it's on the shoe Uh Let's see. Okay, now you just actually gave me a reason to get back on the shroomery. anybody uh, this is I don't think so but I'll ask you uh, Harris Babic uh, when you chop off the cap um, do you find the stem still grows yes it does really yeah oh I thought you were gonna say no holy shit okay depending uh, on if, the, if I don't know I don't know exactly if it's uh, as I've noticed from the cloning thing it came from a cluster uh -huh. so as that cluster continued to oh, grow it, that it stem did, mass. did get grower yeah okay cool I think we're getting there. Um, all right, here's one seeking something. Uh, what's your experience and recommendations with trying to clean up cultures? Like if you get a dirty swab or a dirty plate, do you, what's your process for trying to clean that up? Pretty much the same way, just making transfers. Just, just watching what grows out, kind of observing, and when you see contamination or mycelium, you kind of want to grab them before they start to get out of control in there. Right. So if you know it's contaminated, keep an eye out onto it and see where my sim develops and, and grab, you know, before yeah. uh, contam gets to it and make transfers out from that. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't done anything special to to really clean up because uh, if you just do agar work, it's it's not too hard to clean up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hunter sonification. Uh, do you flip the cake after rehydrating for a second flush? I don't, but I've heard people do it, and I, I, it sounds like a great idea to me. I just haven't tried it personally, but, you know, I, I when I hydrate them, they, they get kind of very soft, and me trying to flip them over sometimes, mm -hmm. I, I just don't mess with it too much. Now, yeah, I agree in tubs, it, that's hard to do without breaking the cake. I do do it in bags, um, I, I, so here's what I'll do. If I see literally nothing ever grow ever on the bottom, like no pin start, no primordia, no nothing, I will not flip it. It seems to know its orientation and want to stay that way. If, however, I've also gotten some, you know, random little pin start or uh, little mini fruits uh, underneath the cake, I will sometimes try to flip it. And it's hit or miss. I, I don't know if it's a superior way of doing it or not, but you know, it's something to do. It's fun. It is definitely cool if you flip the cake and then get a really nice flush from the bottom. But yeah, I, I don't tend to do it if I have zero pins on the sides or the bottom because I, I pack my bags really well. Yeah. All right, let's see here. All right, uh... We'll talk about that another episode. Here we go. Uh, another one from Seeking Something. I get a lot of anxiety when cleaning my cultures without a flow hood. Any broke boy sterility recommendations when contam starts? I mean, man, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to answer this one real fast and just say, clean your shit. Um, Gary uh, Hefferly, a fresh from the farm fungi, will just beat it over your head like that dude is cleaning all the time. I mean, you just got to keep your shit clean. Uh, but PGT, have you ever had like a big outbreak and you had to do something special to, to remediate it? Pretty much just cleaning it. Uh, when yeah. I was in the apartment, I had a lot of carpet and... Uh. Yeah, it, it, when you're vacuuming, it kicks stuff up all around. Yeah. I had pets going around, so it was. I had a lot of contamination rates um, from that. So yeah, cleaning is definitely crucial um, for sure. Yeah. I do a lot more cleaning now than I did before, 
And uh, yes, use use that still airbox, man. That that's that's the key right there. Yeah, um, and move slow. Yep. You know, and just how I like to think of it is just pretend you're doing brain surgery. Like just just try to be a little tip for Serotech is just try to be mindful of where your hand placement is and try not to get your hand over the exposed area when you're working with your agar. Agreed. Yeah, I um I noticed that uh Every once in a while, if I'm pouring agar and I don't go and really scrub my hands well beforehand, including my forearms, that maybe one out of 100 plates, I'll get like a little yeast or a little staff growing in it. And I'm, I'm assuming that's just because one little time when I wasn't thinking and, you know, I moved my hand over it, one little piece of skin or something flaked into there. And yeah, that's clean it. I mean, that's, you know, whether you're cleaning the air, you can buy a little $60, um, desktop HEPA filter and, and run that in the room that you're doing work in. Just any little thing that you do, any amount of cleaning you do definitely helps for sure. Yep. I definitely recommend getting one of those room purifiers and, and having that, you know, going in the area that, that you're going to be working in. Alrighty here. I just got in trouble from John Stamos. He got mad. He says, I never read his questions. I have nothing against you, John Stamos. Let me find your damn question. Here we go. I love you, John Stamos. Oh, yes. No, okay, so I I just thought this would be better for, for another episode, but I'll pull it up. Um, he says, uh, Dr. Mike and I have been talking about using probiotics in liquid culture jars and agar plates. Have either of you tried that yet? That might be, man, I wish I could get my buddy Tim of Tip of the Cap to get on here and talk to me. He would probably have some opinions about that. But I have never used probiotics uh, in that way whatsoever. whatsoever. I, I use the Dr. Mike's more or less as prescribed and, and, and enjoy it. Um, have you ever experimented with putting weird things in your liquid culture like bacteria? Um, I have not. I'm... I think it would be something great to kind of look into. Mm -hmm. I kind of like, like you said, just use it as Dr. Mike has prescribed it. Yeah. And uh, it, it's done well there. Um, yeah, I, the I would thing... imagine it, it could benefit because there's more nutrients in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I don't really know enough about the, the, the biology that's going on there. But I, I do know he always talks about that when you're spraying your grain, when you're using it in the beginning, the idea is you want the the bacteria and the mycelium to kind of be growing at a similar rate in the beginning. You don't, so I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but if I spray too much of the MPG plus, I would get really heavy overlay. I'd have to like scrape the overlay off and, and, and start again. Um, but yeah, my my concern with putting it in the liquid culture would be that the bacteria would maybe proliferate too rapidly. Now, I don't know if the bacteria he uses is aerobic or anaerobic, and maybe that would play into it. But um, I think John Stamos is just a little more advanced for, for us at this point. But keep talking with him. The thing I like about Dr. Mike is he seems like he wants to keep, you know, figuring all this stuff out and do more testing, so... Yeah, I, I definitely think. agree. More testing should be done on it. Yeah. And yeah. 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 I have, uh, I, I know you were saying you're, you're going to talk about it down the road, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I've, I find like, uh, a lot of my albinos do really well with it. And then, uh, other non albinos, maybe, maybe they're benefiting, maybe they're not, maybe the cake, uh, you know, the cake's definitely colonizing faster, but I don't know all the time if overall it's improving my yields but man for some of them it, it's a slam dunk i know a lot of people love to go on and on about how it's snake oil but these people don't know what they're talking about it's definitely there's something there it's maybe not perfected but i i'm i love to experiment and mess around with stuff so i'm having fun using it yeah i've noticed um it hit or miss sometimes with it mm -hmm. but when it hits it's it's great like when you find mm -hmm. a, a genetic that really likes to it um they do really well i've noticed um some just don't seem to react much to it at all right but i don't find that to be bad in any case either 
Yeah, I've also on a, man, I forget who I was talking to about this, but I've seen some gourmet grows where, holy Lord Jesus, uh, it, it was just clearly working out really well for some of the gourmets. So I, I still think we're, you know, I think we think we know everything about cultivation and yes, we're obviously, we can grow some mushrooms, but I think, you know, there, there's plenty that we haven't figured out yet. And I, I like messing around with all that stuff. Um, I, I know we're getting close to wrapping it up here, but let's do, uh, one more question, uh, from Mike Denver. Um, any strains that PGT likes for improving mental health? Do you find, I think this, this would kind of tie into a question I would ask you, which is, um, you know, some people like to say a cube is a cube and it's all the same and it's just the dose. Um, have, in your experience, do you feel that, um, you know, like for example, eight step, apes definitely hit different or pancyans are, you know, definitely a different experience. Uh, what's your opinion about that? Um, <clears throat> I would say the, yeah, uh, I kind of agree with you that cube is, is a cube um, unless it's, you know, a PE. And mm -hmm. um, I find that they all can, can improve mental health. Um, it just, yeah. it, it works differently for everybody. It's not a one size fit all. Right. And, you know, it, it might take a little bit of experimentation to kind of figure out what works for you and, and what doesn't. Right. And it's kind of, kind of what I've went through. I find for me, I personally like, um, you know, the, the stronger varieties just because it has a more profound impact onto me. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it might not be for everybody. And I always encourage, you know, microdose and if it works yeah. for you there, just, just stick with it. You know, why, mm -hmm. why ruin something good? Um, right. You know. And some people aren't ready and cool microdose for a couple of years and you never know where you're going to be at in two years. Might be ready for it. Um, okay. Oh yeah. Somebody. Okay. So two people now want to have you talk about Haoli. What do you got to say? Haoli? Mm -hmm. um, I received it from one of my friends mm -hmm. uh, in the micro community. And uh, I believe he told me they were like albino PS Hawaiians or something like that. Okay. Um, and then I kind of looked into it a little bit and I guess uh, the creator of it, um, I haven't seen him around much anymore, but I think he mentioned something about it, it placing the, the, the psilocybin cup. Um, so that's kind of what got me interested right. in, in them, kind of like checking them out. Cool. All right, man. Um, well, uh, not to be a downer, but uh, Geeky is currently looking for a new job. There was a little shuffling that happened at the hospital, and so I'm now trying to uh, re- uh, locate so i have been doing a lot of interviews and i have uh, a, a little thing going on tomorrow morning so i am uh i think at the little over the two hour mark here we're, we're going to conclude and uh i want to thank uh philly golden teacher for coming on um I, I i really love sitting down here getting to know you more i feel like i know you more uh than even i did yesterday um and uh, hopefully we can get you back on and, and continue the conversation. Um, is there any uh, last things you want to say to the people watching or anything coming up to for us to be on the lookout for? Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of reading through the chat a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, Pleasure Tech Guy pointing out it's pronounced Howley. Um, Howley, I, yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I wasn't aware of that, so thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I... I appreciate everyone for coming out to, you know, hang out and check out PGT and learn more about me. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of positive comments out there and just want you guys to know I appreciate it. I am definitely in the works for getting more content out. Um, look out for Pen, Pen Science Tech. I, I'm, you know, I'm almost there. Uh, nice. I just want to make sure I get it right uh, before I, I mm -hmm. decide to, to share it. So just, just be a little bit more patient, and uh, yeah, uh, PGT will deliver. 
Cool, man. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And you know, if, if you didn't make it this far, uh, hopefully at a later date, you, you get to catch it all and, and catch up and, uh, learn what we all learned. And until next week, uh, hope you guys in, enjoy your, uh, enjoy your mushies, enjoy your, your friends and your family. And, uh, until next time. Oh, one more thing. I want to yeah. uh, as I kind of mentioned here. Uh, if you guys are interested in any more of my stuff, uh, you want to keep up to date with me, uh, phillygoldenteacher.com. Yep, I think I put most of your stuff in the description, but let's double double check it, and I will add any links and stuff like that you want. That way, anybody watching can can connect with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah so cool, I did man. put some, some resources out on my, my page if anyone's interested in, in checking those out. Great. Cool, man. All right. Take care, guys. Uh, until next time. All right. Thank you very much, Michael. See ya.